Good afternoon. Welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Business, Inspections, Housing, and Zoning Committee for today, which is June 20th. I have been joined by Council Members Chavez, Rainville, and Osman, which is a quorum of the committee. Uh, we have a consent agenda that lists the following items. Of the, item number three is the liquor license approvals and four are the renewals. Item five are grant applications to the Met Council for their Livable Communities demonstration account, as well as their TOD grants round. Item number five is an addition to the Metropolitan Council's Livable Communities Pre-Development Grant application for a project at 328 West Broadway. Item seven is an alley vacation for the Greenbelt addition. Are there any items anyone would like to pull off the consent agenda for discussion? Prior to the vote, I want to note that Councilmember Chugtai has joined, and as as Councilmember Ellison, all in favor of the consent agenda, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Those items are approved. I want to take a moment to introduce Eric Hansen, who is sitting on the dais as our interim CPED director, and he will be here as long as it takes. Uh, and so questions that would have been directed to Ms. Brennan will now be directed to Mr. Hansen. Thank you for being here today and for joining us uh, to answer any questions or if there are any comments. Uh, we'll move on to our public hearing agenda, starting with item number one, which is Coalition Restaurant. This is a permanent expansion of premise. Uh, Ms. Lingo, welcome. Thank you, Chair Goodman and committee members. I'm Amy Lingo, Manager of Licenses and Consumer Services, and I am presenting an application from Coalition Restaurant owned by Coalition Restaurants Edina, LLC. The business is located at 3808 50th Street in Ward 13. The applicant is requesting a permanent expansion of premises. The applicant plans to build a patio on the east side of 3808 West 50th in their private parking lot. There will be 36 seats in the private patio. The proposed hours are Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m., Saturday, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. On May 30th, 30 notices were sent to the property owners within 300 feet of the premises. Notices were also sent to the Fulton Neighborhood Organization, the Southwest Minneapolis Business Association, and Councilmember Linnea Palmasano. We have received, we have not received any concerns from the community. There have been no complaints, 31 calls, or police calls associated with the business, and there are no operating conditions or other issues. The Licenses and Consumer Services Division recommends approval of the permanent expansion of premises. And this concludes my presentation. I stand for any comments. Are there any questions from Ms. Lingo on item number one? Seeing none, thank you for your report. This is a public hearing on item number one, which is a permanent expansion of premise. Is there anyone here to speak to this issue? I understand Deacon Ellis is here. Come on up. Uh, please state your name and yeah, address Deacon, for the record. Uh, Deacon Eels. Um, just say to introduce myself, I'm one of the owners of Coalition. And uh, just uh, thank you for your time. And we're excited to uh, build this patio. That's probably five years too late. Um, we, we slow down in the summertime because it's beautiful outside, and yeah, that's what we're excited for. So. Perfect. Well, thank you so much yeah. for being here today, sir. Yeah, thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak to this issue? Anyone? Anyone? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Council Member Rainville. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to move approval of uh, the Coalition Restaurants request, item number one. Further comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Any opposed? That item is approved. We'll move on to item number two, uh, which is uh, the pottery. Ms. Harvett, welcome. Thank you, Council Chair and Council Members. I'm Lead Inspector Michelle Harvett with Licenses and Consumer Services. I'm presenting an application from the pottery owned by Pottery Minneapolis LLC. The business is located at 240 Hennepin Avenue in Ward 3. The applicant is requesting approval of an on-sale liquor Sunday sales 2 a.m. limited entertainment license. Their, hours of, their proposed hours of operation are Monday through Thursday, 4 p.m. to 12 a.m., Friday, 12 p.m. to 2 a.m., Saturday, 11 a.m. to 2 a.m., and Sunday, 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. They have indoor seating for 214 patrons, and there is no outdoor seating. On May 30th, 11 public hearing notices were sent to property owners within 450 feet of the licensed premises. Notices were also mailed to the Downtown Minneapolis Neighborhood Organization, the Warehouse District Business Association, and Council Member Rainville. 
We have received one comment from the community that is not in support of the business operating until 2 a.m. We have received one comment that is in support of this application. Pottery is located at street level in a newly constructed mixed use building with apartments above. The licenses, the licenses and consumer services division recommends approval of an on sale liquor, Sunday sales, 2 a.m. limited entertainment license for pottery. This concludes my presentation. I'm available for any questions. Are there any questions for Ms. Harvin on item number two? Seeing none, thank you so much for your report. We'll open the public hearing on item number two, which is an on-sale liquor license with limited entertainment. Is there anyone here to speak to this issue? Please, sir, step forward and state your name and address for the record. Hello, everybody. My name is Clayton Stanley. I'm the director of operations for our Puerto Rican brand with Drop Shack Inc. And I uh, just want to introduce myself and I'm uh, super glad to come to the market, uh, the market of Minneapolis uh, to bring 140 jobs to the community. Um, so, so super glad to be here and just want to say hello and introduce myself too as well. Thank you so much, awesome. Mr. Thank Stanley. You. Thank you for being here today. Is there anyone else here to speak to this issue? Anyone? Anyone? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Council Member Rainville. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so, Mr. Stanley, uh, in response to one of the, if you could come to the dais, please. And I do want the committee to know I had the opportunity to meet with Mr. Stanley at length and another one of his team members, and so I'm very comfortable with what you're trying to do, and I welcome you to our community. Thank you. But in response to one of the concerns that was voiced, uh, have you had a chance to talk to the apartment building, the people upstairs above you? Um, no, only the owner, the owner of the actual building that comes down. Um, we've had an opportunity to talk to him as well, but not any of the patrons that actually stay there. Okay. Yeah. Do you think it would be possible? I do not want to hold your license up today. I, I want this to move forward, and I'll, and I'll be making that motion. Sure. But it's it's very important that uh, you meet with the residents of that apartment building. If you, if you could uh, uh, agree to that, I would I would appreciate it. Yes, sure. I'm in town for the next four weeks. I'll make sure I agree to speak to someone up there for sure. Okay. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so yep, much. Absolutely. Is there anyone else here to speak to this issue? Anyone? Anyone? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Council Member Rainville. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, with uh, the agreement to meet with the uh, residents of that apartment building, I'm going to move approval of the Puttery's uh, liquor license, item number two. Item number two has been moved for approval. Further comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That item is approved. Thank you for being here, sir. We'll move on to our discussion items, starting with item number eight, which is a commercial property development fund loan to Ergo Holdings at 901 West Broadway. Ms. Moses, welcome. Good afternoon. Thank you, Chair Goodman and committee members. My name is Judy Moses with the CPED Business Development Department. Um, this report requests approval of a commercial property development fund loan in the amount of $425,000 to Ergo Holdings II LLC to assist in securing permanent financing of the property located at 901 West Broadway Avenue. Ergo Holdings is owned by Abubakar Jelani, Tamitha Richmond, Ahmed Jama, and Fahid Madi. 901 West Broadway is currently a vacant two-story commercial building, which is, was purchased on a contract for deed in 2020 by Perfect Balance Child Care. Perfect Balance Child Care and Broadway Hall, Halal Market are two companies that are owned and managed by Mr. Jelani. The Broadway Halal Market first opened in 2018, a block east of the site. The market aimed to deliver quality ingredient halal food and products to the North Minneapolis area. The market was successful, but was forced to close in October 2021 when the landlord um, demolished the building to construct the Satori Village Apartments. The project at 901 West Broadway is to buy out the contract for deed, renovate the building, and open the market on the ground floor and have office space on the second floor. Ergo Holdings will rent out the office space to other small businesses. The total project costs are $4.3 million and will be financed through a combination of sources, including bank financing, uh, the borrower's equity, city loan funds, and a grant from the Main Street program. This concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. And the business owner is here as well. Okay, great. 
Um, are there any questions for staff? Councilmember Osman. Um, thank you. First, well, congratulations to the owners, and I fully support this item. I think I think I, I just have a general question about the program. This is I understand this has been a great program for minority people of color businesses, and uh, very popular in um, in that. Um, can you talk about what the life of the program? And uh, I know I understand uh, it. Uh, there's no limit of how many applications people can put. Um, I'm trying to encourage my residents, I believe, the three years I've been here. Uh, no one uh, in any of uh, my district have had, um, um, you know, awarded in this, and I understand that. Um, um, so w w what is the life of the contract, uh, uh, of the program, and talk about uh, the the funding that's available for the folks that. Yep, so Ms. Moses, you don't have to answer this question. <laughs> Let <laughs> me see it. first if there's any specific questions about this program, because I don't want the applicants to think we're not supportive uh, or don't want this to happen. So let's first do that, then we'll get a briefing, which would be great from either Mr. Mercer or Mr. Hansen on the trajectory of the program. So first we'll call on Mr. Uh, Councilmember Ellison. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I am uh, uh, super excited to, to, to see this coming forward um, and, uh, and I definitely want to encourage all my colleagues to get a briefing on the program, understand the program a lot better. I do think that it's the number one way that we as a city can support small businesses and owning commercial property. And so, um, and I think that it's, it's done a tremendous job in, in executing that. And so, um, I don't know if it's given that we've got some questions on, on the dais, I'm not sure if it's appropriate to move this, but I do want to move this, uh, this item forward, uh, move approval of this item and, um, not sure if we wanted to hear from the developer at all or, or, uh, or get a brief word, but yes, I would I think, invite it. I if, think it would be great if the, um, the people who are doing the project would like to say a few words. You are welcome to introduce your team or just tell us a little bit about what you're doing. Uh, Council Member Ellison has made a motion to approve and we will take that after this and then we'll get a briefing on the project. All right, wonderful. So thank you for having us first and foremost. Uh, my name is Dwayne Morris. I've been a consultant on this project for about two years now. It's been a little bit difficult, but um, you know we're proud to finally bring something to the market um, that provides healthy food for the area, provides something for everyone around the community, and that's affordable as well. And so that's uh, you know we're, we're we're just very fortunate, I'd say. And so thank you very much. So, and this is uh, Abu Kar Jelani. Yeah, thank you. My name is AJ Abu Bakar Jelani, um, and also I'm one of the owners. And we are really excited to get this thing going on. And Besides being a business owner, is also help community out. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here today, both of you. Thank you. So, if there are no further comments or questions, we will act on Councilmember Ellison's motion. Thank you. Yeah. All in favor of approving this uh, loan, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, that is unanimously approved. Thank you for being here. Now we'll see amongst all of these wonderful staff. Uh, well, I, I'll start with Mr. Mercer. It seems like this is a Mr. Mercer question. <laughs> he came down, so we want him to. Good Sir? afternoon, uh, Madam Chair, Council Members. Miles Mercer, manager of the Business Development Group within CPED. Um, my team administers the Commercial Property Development Fund program, also known as the Ownership Opportunity Fund program. Uh, it is first uh, authorized back in 2020 when the program guidelines were approved. Since then, the City Council has approved about 20 uh, loans for projects, most of which have since closed and the loans have been dispersed. Uh, we have done loans around various parts of the city. There is a priority to have that investment uh, benefit areas of the city that are more economically challenged and to help uh, small businesses and emerging developers fill the funding gaps that they experience on their projects. Um, I believe we have done two loans early on in your award, sir, in terms of for the Jack's Hardware and uh, yep. Becca's Bakery projects. And we are talking with some other pr prospects from various wards right now. Uh, and right now we are in the process of juggling our, the money that we have appropriated for the program with the uh, tremendous amount of demand and interest that we are seeing from the program. Uh, we've been talking with many different projects and some of which have been talking about for a few years. 
Uh, we do have a focus on trying to benefit uh, properties that were significantly damaged during the civil unrest from 2020. And so we're looking at our pipeline and always trying to juggle how do we meet the demand and uh, that, that we have given what our budget is and given what our program priorities are. Councilmember Osman. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, that's really helpful. Uh, I just want to uh, say again that this is uh, a great program and gives opportunity for uh, minority folks that might not be able to have asset or, or ownership uh, in this. And uh, I want to thank you and the staff that have really put uh, so much effort and, and, and um, work to make this program. And hopefully we can continue this program, continue funding it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. And I will note that the mayor did authorize a multi-million dollar contribution to this fund through ARPA funds in addition to the budget because of its success. And I'm quite sure that this is um, a priority for CPED economic development staff as well. Thank you so much for being here today, Mr. Mercer. Any other questions on this topic? Seeing none, we'll move on to item number nine. Uh, this is a topic is really the Workforce Development Board appointments, but because we haven't spent a lot of time talking about this very important issue of workforce development, we decided to ask uh, Ms. Barhelgen if she would give a quick presentation, maybe authorize the folks who are, introduce the folks who are here today, and just to let you know that although it does not get all of the attention in the CPED portfolio, workforce development is a critical issue in the city and it is for some of the uh, council members who serve on this committee in particular and so we thought this would be a very good time to do a briefing so Ms. Barhelgen welcome and thank you for being here thank you so much um, I'm Deb Barhelgen director for the city of Minneapolis employment and training and director of the Minneapolis workforce development board and um, chair Goodman and members thank you for taking the time on your agenda today I'll highlight the duties and responsibilities about the board talk about our service providers and outcomes, and then we'll introduce a few board members that are here today. So we're, we're grateful for the time, but even more proud for the importance that the that City of Minneapolis policymakers have placed on investing in residents of Minneapolis, creating one of the most robust programs in the state. And right now, we're at a record um, low unemployment right now. As you know, we have a labor supply issue, but tight labor markets are a key time for those that the labor market traditionally overlooks or has left behind. A recent study by WorkRise shows that tight labor markets increase earnings and mobility for disadvantaged workers well beyond periods of unemployment. So entering the labor market during a tight labor market provides a protective and positive effect over the long term. And it's really largest for those that um, they, who has, for people that have historically been left behind. Um, and it even, reduces the duration of future unemployment spells um, during economic downturns. So our work right now really is as urgent as ever, and I thank you all for the in investing in the public workforce system in Minneapolis. Um, developing our workforce is a key component of the city's economic development strategy, and we're really fortunate to have some of the most expert staff in workforce development in the state on our team at the city, and I have a few with me here today. We also have very strong partnerships with our nonprofit providers who do the work every day of helping job seekers get and stay on a career path. So I want to just talk a little bit about my story. I was once, once one of those job seekers which is how I got into an employment and training. I was, I was laid off from a job at an environmental nonprofit and went through job seeking services as a dislocated worker client. Um, they helped me with my resume. They helped me buy interviewing clothes since literally all I had at the time were jeans and t-shirts. They helped me put a, a heater in my car in my Dodge Aspen because I had no heat in the middle of the winter. Um, most importantly, though, they provided me the support that I needed to um, help me through a really tough period of joblessness. Um, eventually, the agency helping me hired me. So I went on to work for several nonprofits um, before I was hired at the city. But looking for work is really hard work. Um, so that's my story, and I'm grateful for the public workforce system that it was there for me and that it continues to be there for people that are unemployed and underemployed. Um, I'll move on to a slide, I guess. Um, so the, this is the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act is the legislation that creates our federally defined local workforce boards, guiding, and it guides the composition of our boards as well as providing guidance on programming. And you can see the iterations of the federal law here. We've been through several. 
And this is actually how we're organized in our state. Um, there are 16 local workforce development boards across the state, and it covers all 87 counties. And we're a member of the Minnesota Association of Workforce Boards, which is the statewide association representing all local boards. And this, the statewide association focuses on things like coordination and communication. Across the workforce system, it does professional development training, and it also um, does some federal and state advocacy. Um, local boards are business-led. 51% have to be from the private sector. Jonathan Weinhagen, who's head of the Minneapolis Regional Chamber, is current chair of our board. And um, Minneapolis Employment and Training, um, our division, is the administrative entity for the board. Um, so boards are established in federal law. Um, they're responsible for overseeing federal workforce funding and programming, along with overseeing the one-stop or workforce centers in, your, in our local areas. Um, so Minnesota Workforce Development Boards have a long, long history of like innovative workforce programming um, and achieving a successful outcomes. Um, and we're also always looking at improving services of the system, um, of the career force system. So, and speaking of career force, this is how, this is, you'll see this brand. Career force is the brand. You'll see this on our materials. Um, it used to be called, our system used to be called Workforce Centers, and now um, it's branded as Career Force with local workforce boards pro providing the operational support to the 50 Career Force locations across the state. Um, and we do that in collaboration, collaboration with DEED and other partners. And so, and it's a dual customer, both job seekers and employers are served through this system. In Minneapolis, you probably know we have two locations. That our comprehensive center is at, at 800 West Broadway in North Minneapolis, and then our affiliate site is at Lake in Chicago in South Minneapolis. And here's our mission and approach. Um, to services, it's really embedded in equity and inclusivity. And just as the city has made intentional efforts to have our boards and commissions reflect the diversity of the city, the Minneapolis board is a, really a leading example of that effort. And then some key functions, I won't read these, but this is um, point to a few of the areas. Um, one of the most important is the, the developing of our um, workforce plan, a regional local plan for workforce programs. We, we'll start that process in the fall. And other core functions I'll point out here include things like engaging employers, developing promising practices, and then career pathways along with the selection of our service providers. And key purposes. Um, a few purposes of the federal law, it requires states and local areas to always look at um, improving the services in our local areas, um, and we're always looking at the dual customer, like I said, job seekers and employers, and also we're charged with serving people with the most barriers to employment, so that includes people that are formerly incarcerated, um, um, young people that are aging out of foster care, for example, um, highly mobile, mobile and homeless individuals, along with people that are long-term unemployed, just to name a few. And here's how, how and where we work. Um, on the right side, you'll know, you know, these are our um, partners in our work, our nonprofit service providers. They come before you every year to, and we provide uh, best practices awards. Um, many of you know them. And um, these are strategically chosen providers who are located in the areas of the city where those most in need can receive cult culturally appropriate services um, close to where they live. Um, also, the left side, these are collaborative examples. These are our partnerships. So we work not only locally, we work metro-wide, statewide, and nationally. And partnerships are, a, a, the main goal here is to provide a coordinated approach to service delivery so job seekers can receive the right services to meet their needs. And then I'll get into some outcomes. Um, Nearly 8,000 residents served, um, and we're doing things like um, providing work experience, internships, um, job placement services, people are upgrading skills. The average wage gain last year was $5.50 per hour, which means that they are earning that much more per hour than before they started with us. 
Um, also in the lower right-hand corner, you'll see job fairs. About 2,000 people received um, services through just job fairs, career fairs that we do a lot of, and um, a couple hundred employers also were engaged last year. Overall, kind of the, some of the demographics, about 85% are BIPOC residents in our adult programming, and then youth programs, we go up to past 90% for Step Up and for Minneapolis Youth Works. And some key investments, just to highlight a few things. Um, thanks to your support, we've been able to um, do things like guaranteed basic income pilot, fund outreach projects. It's an ambassador project. Um, um, also, do um, we're developing a curriculum for work readiness so that um, all residents can learn job readiness skills. So these are key investments last year and this year that we're really thankful for. And. I think we'll get into board introductions. We have some of our board here. We're not, um, about a third of the board is up um, every year. So we have several board appointments that are up and we have several members that are here today. I think three, is that right, Matthew? Four. Four. Oh, hey, how are you? Great, Marcus. <laughs> um, so we have Jenna Gilbert. Should I just call people out? Sure, okay. they, can, yeah. they don't have to say anything. Okay. I mean, they can if they want. Sure, but. sure. Okay, Jenna Gilbert with Target is a returning applicant. Thank you for serving. And Jamie Miller is a new applicant from Excel Energy. All right. And Ravi Singh is a new applicant as well from US Bank. And then Marcus Pope is here, Executive Director of Youth Prize. We're super excited to have um, returning members and new applicants. We have a great board. They help us get our work done. So I'm super proud of that and of the work that we do. And I'll stand for any questions. Well, first, I want to thank you for showing us your 2022 results. Serving 8,000 people is no small order when you think about it through all of our partners. So it's really great work. Thank you for being here. And I want to thank the folks who came down today. You know, you took time out of your schedule. There's a cost involved in that. And we really appreciate your work. We understand that you're professionals who are working to help better the lives of citizens in our community. And we are grateful to you. And we'll stay out of your business. This is probably the only time you'll be dealing with us. Um, but it feels good to know that you took time to come and to serve on this very important panel. Um, I will turn it over to Councilmember Osman. Thank you so much. And thank you for serving and um, really providing your time to, uh, you are helping many, many folks that are out there. As someone who also used to be a, a employment counselor, uh, this kind of programs help many people. Uh, better their lives and, and get that. So this is great things that uh, you're leading. Uh, what can like the average small businesses and community do to contribute that, the that's, work you do? That's a great question. Um, I didn't put in a plug, but I should. So if you know of job seekers that are looking for work, please refer them to Career Force locations, any of the Career Force locations. And they can also get direct use to some of our nonprofit partners as well. So. Um, please help spread the word. Also, for employers that are seeking um, a talented workforce, same place. Go to Career Force, um, to our two locations, and you'll get to the right place. And so, thank you for allowing me to put the plug in. Maybe you could also introduce your staff, staff yes. members from your yep. team who are here today. Matthew Courtney is here, administrative yeah. services, and then Mark Brinja is the manager of programs. And Mark's hiding back Mark there. Mark is hiding he's... away from camera. He's the one that gets stuff done. So mm -hmm. not that you don't, but uh, yes. Mark is the person oh, who yeah. gets stuff done. We're yes. very grateful that you're here, both of you. Thank you for being here. Council Member Rainville. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I do want to thank you for your leadership, for all your staff, and for the private sector folks who, who stepped up uh, to volunteer. Thank you so much. Uh, it's very nice of you to come down today. And uh, I will contradict uh, uh, Chair Goodman a little bit. We will stay in your business in that. Uh, we're going to fund you. So. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. Um, the motion, is there anyone else who has, oh, I'm so sorry, Council Member Ellison. Uh, just <clears throat> wanted to echo the thanks and uh, appreciate the presentation and I won't have to, you know, recount what my colleagues have said, but uh, it is a big deal when we can engage folks uh, all across the city, when we can get engage folks in Cedar Riverside and North Minneapolis. And I know that the, um, uh, the 800 building on West Broadway has been, you know, just a, a, a really important community member um, and, uh, and, and even kind of stepping out uh, of, of maybe what you think they should be doing and working on things like uh, public safety, working on things, you know, working on a lot of things that integrate them with the community. And so uh, I think it's really important asset to, to the community and I really appreciate the service that you guys provide. So just wanted to offer that. 
you so much. Fantastic. So I am going to move the staff recommendation on all of the appointments, the mayoral appointments and reappointments, as well as the waiving of the residency requirement for those that don't live in the city but take time to do this good work on our behalf. Are there comments or questions on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, that unanimously approves. I want to thank, is approved. I want to thank you all again for being here today. Seeing no further business and without objection, I will declare the meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. License fees help pay for services that make our community safer. Whether it's matching pets with new homes, catching strays, or investigating cases of problem animals.